don't mind me, I'm just gonna get right back on this cot here. I may or may not be back to work in the next few minutes because I'll probably fall asleep right here. We should show them just how easy it is to get a checkup. It's been a while since I've been to the dentist, not gonna lie. I'm ice skating right now on this sidewalk and uh, it's pretty icy and I just had to stop this gentleman who was crazy running in shorts. We're live this morning at Green County Courthouse where Rachel Stoudy is expected to be sentenced for killing members of her own family. Coming up what lawyers say she could face. Slick roads this morning. We are on them about to give you updates on road conditions and trouble spots to look out for. This is some thick ice on this car. This is what you're going to be seeing when you wake up in the morning. I mean there is no getting that ice right now. The cold is not stopping these folks from standing up for what they believe in. About 70 workers out here carrying these signs. Unfair labor practice stripe here at the Polar Tank trailer off of Kearney. Someone was shot and killed in this home behind me, Jerry. We are standing on the 700 block of Maple Street in Buffalo. I just got off the phone with Chief Canal of the Buffalo Police Department. He told me that this is still an ongoing investigation. You can see this cloud layer of film under the lens of the eyeball that is a cataract one doctor says to think of it as a great now prepare yourself you might get chills envisioning this before lasers doctors would have to hand cut a five millimeter circle on the top layer of the eyeball can you imagine Justin inside the walls of this school is a room that can withstand 250 mile per hour winds and an EF5 tornado. Melody this spot where I am now looks much different than it did back in December when it was one of the many areas that flooded. Construction began here at Ozark Junior High yesterday. The district essentially wants to put walls on this walkway here and attach this building to the one next door. This is a vacant building one of the many in the area not well kept and essentially a waste of space. Whether it is gathering carts outside or stocking shelves inside, Walmart Associates hired before December 31st will make $10 an hour. Police say Wood snatched Owens from a West Springfield street near her home. They say he then assaulted her before shooting her in the head. Her body was later found in his home, wrapped in two trash bags and placed in a tote box. This free the nipple sign is just one of the many outcomes that came from city council changing that ordinance last fall. Now the city seems to be backtracking on that decision. This policy change is meant to protect students, faculty, staff, and all employees based on their sexual orientation. Since 2011, the Seymour School District has declined more than 50 students. That equals $350,000 each year. And the repercussions of that have some students, staff, and families at a loss as well. 10-year-old Grace Grace Everett says her Christmas didn't kick off to the best start. Well, I cried for about two days because I was just so sad because I loved it so much. It wasn't a very good Christmas present. She and her seven-year-old brother Daniel received news that their favorite school program was coming to an end. I don't want them to shut down stage next year. The Seymour Area Gifted Education Program is for students who excel in academics. But Grace and Daniel's mother, Jana, says it's much more than that. It's really going to affect a lot of kids. It's a place where students who love to learn can fit in and it's made all the difference for her kids. We went from school was okay, that school was fine, to in Sage we did this. The Seymour School District was forced to make budget cuts after they began to struggle financially. The Sage program, one of the many to go, along with instructional positions, $120,000 in salary, and the closing of a preschool. The thing that I have the biggest problem is there are no sports programs being cut. They're all academic programs being cut. I reached out to Seymour Superintendent Bruce Denny, who did not want to be on camera, but stated in an email, not a single one of these cuts were desirable for me or the Board of Education, but we are tasked with operating the school district effectively and efficiently. The school might be struggling financially, but to this family, SAGE is what makes its yeah, it's students so successful. Why are you shutting it down when it means so much to others? Unfortunately, just academics are not at the top of the school board's priority right now. Now, Daniel actually suffers from a neurological disease that has caused him to miss 14 days of class already this year, yet 
he still remains at the top of his class and Grace actually went in front of the school board twice to try to keep this program running. It was not successful, but she did say she did see for more than a few people shedding tears in that room, so she was pleased that she could make an impact. This is why I bought this school. What was once a dream, um, this is the section that's 100 years old, and is now is a reality. The, you know, Three years ago, Amy Blancett and her late husband bought Fairbanks Elementary. Kind of fell into place. An abandoned school in North Springfield. We had marks where they had actually started fires on the floors during the winter um, to keep warm. The Missouri State professor says the story of the property was once about her past, losing her husband to cancer and creating a foundation in his honor. But now it's about moving forward and building an environment they would be proud of. It's a huge risk, but it's amazing payoff. She says North Springfield's poverty hasn't always been a focus, so she took it upon herself to provide resources in her Grant Beach neighborhood. Phase one was completed in the summer of 2014. These sections here were the old push cart that went under the gym. It includes a library and offices. Less than two years later, the grand opening of phase two, a daycare, event center that serves as a church and commercial kitchen. The kitchen will function for the daycare in the morning, but then afternoons and evening we're creating programming with the YMCA, so we'll do feeding programs for um, the kids in Springfield. And finally, three. phase three, a laundromat and community market, and the last stretch before her dream is complete. In just three years, Amy and her helpful volunteers have been able to serve over 50 families a week. Piece by piece, her dream is coming true. And that old abandoned school is now what some might call a sanctuary. It's been amazing to see Springfield come together in a project just because someone created action, a place to go and do and be a part of something that's making a difference. Even though it might be a really small part of Springfield, it's changing the lives of the families that we serve.